Inflation in your country, inflation in Ghana. I don't know the economy in the world that's doing well. well Tell me Ghana, where you are Ghana, here. Inflation in Ghana. <laughs> the in highest Ghana. inflation. Well, 15.7%. Uh, yeah. The, the, the Ghanaian said he has fallen 20% on the dollar. The worst, the worst after Russia, which, is, which has a lot of sanctions began, against it. Began, yeah. It's began, it's began to, to firm up. It has began to firm up. And uh, we're, we're, we're seeing uh, the, the CD systematically appre uh, appreciating against the dollar. People still can't employ, you know, I was just reading today, you know, um, people in the hospitality industry that you're pushing so hard, you know, having to lay their staff off. We've got taxi driver unions threatening strikes because of spiraling fuel costs. I mean, it, it doesn't look like a place that I want to go and put my money. Where will you put your money in the world today? Where will you put your money? In Britain? which is suffering the, the, the worst standard of living statistics for over 30 years? Is that where, is that, is it? All right, they, let's, let's, let's situate ourselves correctly. The world is going through very difficult times. Ghana is no exception. Nigeria is no exception. There's no country in the world that is escaping the ravages of both COVID-19 and also the impact of the nuclear. But we, in what you need to look at are where are the, the, the elements being put on the ground that look beyond the, the COVID and beyond the Russian-Ukraine war. And I think you'll find that in Ghana, the recovery program that we have is one that is, is considered very credible, and it is what is going to give us the opportunity to come out of this period a stronger economy. Mm -hmm. And it is that future that we're looking at when we're attracting people. Let, let, let's talk about one of the structures that you say you've put in place. Um, the e-levy, a lot of people are calling it a stealth tax on people who already are impoverished. Um, it's a 1.5% it's a tax on people who do business on their mobile phones. So if they use their mobile phones to send money or to... The digital economy, the mobile economy. Yes, but you're taxing people on money that has already been taxed. Is the biggest economy, in the, is, is becoming, emerge, is emerging as the biggest economy in the country. And for a long period has not been, has not had any taxation at all. So it is important now that uh, they also come into, into the, the, uh, the, the net. Our country has one of the lowest tax to GDP ratios of any country in West Africa and, uh, and of an equivalent economy. Mm. The ECOWAS area, the general average today, tax to GDP average is about 18%. Ghana, we are 13%. So it isn't as if you're talking about a country which is already overtaxed, if at all, if anything at all, is undertaxed. Okay, let me just let me take you up on that point. You know, on your low tax ratio to GDP, I'm just going to quote, uh, read this quote to you. It's from um, John Kwache, who I'm sure you might know is the director of research at the Accra-based Institute for Economic Affairs. He says there are several loopholes in our tax system that if they are plugged, will be able to raise our tax to GDP ratio to something like 20% from the 12% that you're talking about. Are you speaking to experts like him? First of all, there's a recognition that the... the, 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 the he says that there's no need for the e-levy. Well, that's his point of view. He's an expert. What is an expert? There are experts in government as well, and we think it's necessary, and that's the reason why we... You think it's necessary to tax people who are already impoverished? They're not already the impoverished. We're, we're talking about people, we're talking about taxing an industry and uh, 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 transactions where the, a lot of value is being created, and we want to also bring that value into government uh, uh, coffers. I think that is something that is very, there's nothing so, and the level, it's not Ghana, it's the only country that has something like a mobile, a, ta you, a digital you know tax. Many, many, many companies. countries, they will not like it. Because they, they're already taxing people they're who do business they're online, they're and then you are taxing as well. People never like taxes. I don't know any, any group of people, especially businesses, when taxes are brought to them that like it. I, I, when, I, when you hear all these stories, Mr. President, I mean, Ghana was one of the rising stars of, you know, uh, um, the economic recovery of Africa, so to speak. 
you know, but when you hear about all these issues with the economy now, what, what exactly went wrong? Nothing has gone wrong. We've, we, we, we're part of those who have been very badly affected by what has gone on in the last two years. Until 2020, since I came into office, 2017, 2018, 2019, the beginning of 2020, we were growing our economy at about 7%, the GDP growth rate. One of the fastest growing economies in the world was the Ghanaian economy, even in the, in the crunch year of 2020 when the economies of the world dived. Ghana, we still managed a positive rate of growth because the fundamentals of our economy are strong, but it has been a difficult task for all the economies of the world. I think it is important that when you're making the kind of provocative statements that you're making, that you situate yourself, you speak as if you're living in the same time as you and I, where the world economy as a whole has, been, has, has gone through very difficult times. And there are several things that we're doing. 